We've done a lot of videos on this channel about cinematic filmmaking, how to's and behind the scenes, but I thought we should take a moment to dive into the world of photography. Today we're going to specifically talk about photography using the Sony ZV-E10, how I set up this camera, and some methodologies that I think about when I go out to shoot. This assumes you already have a little bit of a working knowledge on how the exposure works inside of this camera, and if you don't, don't worry, I've made a video all about exposure and I'll leave that in the description. So without further ado, let's jump into photography today on Film Alliance. If you're enjoying this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and like these videos so we can reach a wider audience. I will be using several different lenses with the ZV-E10 in order to have more creative freedom and to get the most out of this camera. I'm gonna be using the kit lens that comes with the ZV-E10, which is a 16 by 50 millimeter. I'm gonna be using this 28 to 70 millimeter lens, which I'm gonna flip around so that we can use it as a macro lens. I'm gonna be using this 55 to 210 millimeter zoom lens so that we can zoom in on some nature. And I also have this 17 to 28 millimeter wide angle lens made by Tamron to get some of those wide angle shots. The theme of this video is nature because God's nature is out there everywhere and you can also go outside and enjoy the beauty of it anytime with your camera and also try to get some of the same shots and use the same methodologies that I use. So the first shot we're going to do is with the 16 by 50 millimeter lens that came with the ZV-E10. I'm gonna set it to 35 millimeters because with the 1.5 crop times factor, now 1.5 times, 1.5 times. So the first shot we're going to do is with the 16 by 50 millimeter lens that comes with the ZV-E10. I set it to 35 millimeters because with the 1.5 times crop factor that actually takes us to 50 millimeters. And I like the 50 millimeter length because that gives you the most realistic look compared to what the human eye sees. Initially, I was going to shoot this flower because it looked beautiful to me, but the problem is the sun is behind it. So it's really backlighting us. And whenever, especially with these Sony cameras, whenever you have that backlight that's lighting your subject, it kind of just makes your image fall apart. So now we're gonna go to the other side of the bush. And I'm actually gonna shoot this flower right here because that one actually has sunlight on it. And we have some nice blue skies behind it. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna turn my camera on, then I'm gonna turn my shutter speed up to one over 2000 because the flower is moving a little bit in the wind and with a higher shutter speed, it freezes your motion. So I want it to be nice and frozen when I take the picture. I don't want a lot of that motion blur. And then I'm just gonna bring my aperture all the way down. I'm going to uh, actually increase my ISO until I can start to see some color in that flower. All right, so that looks good. Also, I forgot to mention that I set the drive mode on this camera to continuous bracket with a 0.3 EV and five images. And if you don't know what that means, I explained it at the end of the video where I go over the settings. Basically, all that means is it takes five different pictures at different exposure levels, and then in post-production, I can look at each one and see which one is exposed the best. Then you don't have to try to get your exposure perfect when you're out in the field and you're trying to relay on these little displays and then get home and realize that you're overexposed or underexposed. Continuous bracket just gives you some options. All right, let's go get the next shot. I pulled out the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter wide angle lens because I want to be able to shoot this tree right here and show it for how big and magnificent it is. If I was to shoot like a long lens on it or that 50 millimeter lens, you wouldn't really be able to see. But with the wide angle lens, I'm gonna be able to see just all of the branches spread out. And again, I came to a position where the sun is at my back and I'm pointing at the tree. If I wanted the sun flare to come through the branches, then I would just shoot it towards the tree. But then all of my branches and the leaves and everything would be drowned out by the sunlight. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my aperture up to say f7.1. And the reason why I'm turning my aperture up in this situation is because I want my focus window to be vast. If I was to leave my aperture down at f2.8 and I was pointing towards this tree right here and I was focused on one of these front branches, 
then everything in the background would be blurred out. But I want everything to be in focus, and I want you to be able to see everything, and I don't want anything blurred out. So now that I turn my aperture up to f7.1, I'm gonna bring my shutter speed down to one over 50, and my ISO is set at 50. So that way, even though I'm underexposed, that's okay because I don't want my skies to be overexposed. I can always bring the darks back in post. And because we're using continuous bracket as our drive mode, that gives us a lot more room to play with once we get to post. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot, and right now we're underexposed by negative 1.7. I really love how that came out. It looks like everything's in focus, so all I have to do in post-production is just give it some color and some saturation to make it a really cool picture. Let's go get the next shot. So I put my long zoom lens on the ZV-E10, which is a 55 to 210 millimeter zoom lens, and when you factor in the crop factor, it gives me that much closer to the subject that I'm shooting. I see these little marine chickens over here in the water. And what I'm gonna do, because I have that backlight from the sun shining down on the water, is I'm actually going to underexpose because I don't want that water to be blown out, which is going to make those little chickens almost look like uh, silhouettes, but that's okay. It's pretty artistic. And I think it'll look really cool against the reflection of the water. I'm going handheld, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank my shutter speed up first, and I'm, don't forget I have to go above 210 millimeters because that's how long my lens is. So I'm just gonna crank it up to, say, 320 just to be safe. Then I'm gonna bring my aperture down as far as it'll go, and I'm underexposed right now by about negative 2.0. So the next thing I'm gonna do is bring up my ISO, That looks good. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna throw it into picture profile HLG3, which is picture profile 10. That'll give us the most dynamic range. So now that I'm in HLG3, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that shot. It's actually a cool video. I'm just gonna go ahead and start recording too. I'm making a nature documentary, so this will be some good footage for it. So that's how I use the long lens when I'm shooting photography. Let's go get some macro shots. So for this macro shot, I'm using the 28 to 70 millimeter lens and I have a reverse mount cap that I put on the end of the lens just like this. Then I turn the camera on and I actually take the aperture as high as it can go because I want the focus window to be as large as it can get for macro photography. This is the best part of the day to do this because you want that sun to be nice and shining down right on your subject so that when you crank your aperture so high up, there's still enough light on the subject to light it so you can get that detail. I took the aperture all the way up to F22, and once I have the aperture up, I turn the camera off, take the lens off, and then just flip it around. Just like that. When it comes to macro photography, I always throw the camera into manual focus, and then I can just really slightly move my camera forward and back until my subject is in focus. And the way that I know it's in focus is I turn the peaking display on. I explain more about that at the end of this video when I go through the settings. So I saw this little flower right here. It's like a microscopic flower and it looks like a weed on the surface, but I'm gonna put it down and since it's a little bit windy, I'm gonna try to block the wind from it. And then I'm just gonna throw my camera into um, program auto so that it can expose however it wants to. When it comes to macro photography, I'm really mostly concerned about my focus rather than the exposure. That's why I throw it into program auto. So now I'm just gonna move it back and forth very slightly until I see those red edges along the flower and I'll take my shot.
right, good. So I think that shot looks great. Now let's go back inside and I'll show you how I set this camera up in order to use it for photography. Now, if you're still with me, then you wanna know how I set up my camera and I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly how I did that right now. If you've already messed around with some of your settings and you wanna get your camera back to base, then go to tab number five, page number five, and go to setting reset and then click on initialize. That will take your camera back to its factory settings. I'm not gonna change my camera back to its factory settings because it took me a while to set my camera up like this and I don't wanna to have to start from scratch. To start off, I'm gonna show you how I set my camera up so that when I'm out in the field, I don't have to fumble through the menu system to find what I'm looking for and I can easily navigate around and get to where I need to go in order to get my shot. Instead of boring you by going through each setting and explaining what it does, I'm gonna run through it really quickly and you can just copy my settings onto your camera if that's what you wanna do. If you are interested in what each one of these settings do, I made an entire video on how to set up your camera for cinematic video settings. I go through a lot of the settings and explain the ones that I know to you so you have a better grasp on what each setting does. The first thing that I like to do is make sure that my file format is set to RAW and JPEG because when you shoot in RAW, there's a lot more information inside of the image. And even though it's a bigger file size, you can still grade it as long as you have a photo editing software system that can handle RAW. If you don't have Photoshop RAW and you're just interested in getting some JPEGs, which are more compressed, that's fine too. You can just change that to JPEG only. There's no reason to have RAW images inside your SD card because all that will do is fill up your SD card faster. If you are just shooting in JPEG, I go to JPEG quality and I turn that to extra fine. Even though that's going to take more memory inside of my card, it's not that much more, but it will give me a little bit more room to grade my pictures and post. I come down to aspect ratio and I turn that to 16 by nine because that gives you the rectangle. If you leave it at four by three, it's gonna give you black bars on the side. And even though you'll have more information on the top and the bottom, most screens are in the form of a rectangle. So you'll have those black bars on the outside. So I just changed mine to 16 by nine. Now we're gonna jump over to page three and I turn shoot mode to manual exposure. I will turn it to program auto when we start to do some macro shots. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it to manual exposure. Now we come to drive mode. I turn that to continuous shooting high because then I can just hold down the shutter button and it'll continuously shoot. That way when I get to post, I can pick which one of those photos looks the best. If you're in a precarious situation where the exposure is all weird, then I come down to continuous bracket 0.3 EV. And all this does is it takes three different photos at three different exposures going up in 0.3 increments. So the first one might be underexposed, the next one might be perfectly exposed, and the last one might be overexposed. And what that will do is give you the option of three different images all exposed at different levels so that you can pick which one you like the best. I'll use 0.3 EV three images or five images. That way I have small steps up and I don't have these huge exposure steps where two or three of the photos are just completely unusable altogether. So that's why I used that when I was out in the field and I wasn't 100% sure about my exposure. But for now, I'm gonna turn it back to continuous shooting high. Down to interval shooting function. This is for time lapses. We're not gonna do any time lapses in this video. All we're doing is taking some shots in photography. So we're gonna keep on moving on. Now we're on tab one, page four, and I like to leave the focus mode on manual focus. And I also like to turn the focus area to center because that will focus on whatever's in the center of the frame. Now, even though you can't use focus area in manual focus, sometimes what I'll do is I'll switch over to autofocus. I'll let the camera do the hard work of trying to find the focus, and then I'll switch it to manual focus just to make sure that I don't have any pumping and that I'm sure that I really am focused on the subject that I'm shooting. Make sure that autofocus with shutter is set to on. That way, when you hold down the shutter button, it automatically autofocuses on whatever you're pointing at. When it comes to focus frame color, I turned that to red. That's just the little box that's in the center of the camera. It's easier to see when it's red as opposed to being white, in my opinion. I turned the autofocus area auto clear to off and the display continuous autofocus area to on. And now we're going to go onto page six. So I use the control wheel for my ISO, so I'm just going to leave that alone. The metering mode, I leave it to multi because that just takes the average of light that the camera is sensing and then it exposes for the average. Now there's times that I will change the metering mode, but for the most part, we're gonna be manual exposure, so I don't have to worry about that. Face priority and multi-metering, that's gonna make sure that the camera is exposing for the subject's face if you're shooting like a portrait or something. So it's pretty important to have that on so that you're not exposing for the background by accident. You want the camera, if it's in program auto, to make sure that it's exposing for your subject's face. The exposure step, I left that to 0.3 because there's really no reason to step up 
in exposure more than 0.3 increments. On to page seven. If your exposure compensation is grayed out right now, that's just because we are in manual exposure. But if we were in program auto, that wouldn't be grayed out. And you can just ensure that it's at 0.0, .0 or negative 0.3, just so you're underexposed just a bit. That's how I like to do it. Moving on to tab eight, I turned the white balance to auto, the priority set and auto white balance to standard, the DRO auto HDR to D range optimizer, through creative style to standard, and I'm leaving the picture profile off for now. On to page nine, soft skin effect should be grayed out if you went with the continuous shooting in the drive mode, just because it doesn't work if you are continuously shooting and it doesn't have time to process the soft skin effect. But don't worry, I don't even use that anyways. So as long as it's off, you should be good. On to page 10, I turn my focus magnification time to two seconds, the initial focus mag to times 1.0, auto focus in focus mag on, and manual focus assist on. All that does is it punches in a little bit when I'm manually focusing with my lens, and it gives me a better idea of how my edges look to ensure that I'm really as sharp as I can be. And then I also come to peaking setting and I turn the peaking display on, the level to high and the peaking color to red. So what this does is it outlines all the edges that are in focus and it turns them to red so that you have a better idea of what's in focus for your shot. I use it all the time, but I will put this into my function menu so I can toggle it on and off because sometimes it just gets in the way. On to page 11, I turn the product showcase set to off and the phase registration is pretty cool because if you are in a, an environment where you're trying to shoot one person but there's a lot of different faces, the camera might pick up on the other faces and focus on those faces and so the subject that you're trying to shoot is out of focus. But if you register their face, then the camera will know to always make sure that that's the face that it will focus on. Now tab two, we're gonna go ahead and skip all the way to page seven, where we're going to turn our zebra settings to on and I leave my zebra level at 70. This is probably the most important part of this entire video, which is the custom keys. This is how I set up my custom keys. I use the little trash can here at the bottom as my autofocus, manual focus, control toggle, so I can quickly go between autofocus and manual focus. Number two is this center button right here and I just leave that as the way it is because I like to be able to select things I turned my left control wheel right here to shoot mode, which is number three. And all that does is it gives me the ability to quickly toggle between which exposure I wanna shoot in, um, whether that's program auto, intelligent auto, or even if I have a memory set up, I can quickly get to it. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it as manual. Now to go back to the custom keys, I leave number four as ISO, which is the outside right of my control wheel. I just press it down and then I can quickly toggle my ISO. And also number five as my focus magnifier. So when I'm focusing on something, I can press that little button if I'm in autofocus and it'll punch in a little bit so that I can get a better look to see what the camera is focusing on. The way that you set this up is you just click on whatever one that you wanna change and then you can toggle through many settings to figure out which one you feel like you want the best. I just found that those ones work the best for my workflow. So now I'm gonna go to the second page, which is the top of the camera, which is C1. And that I turned to aperture preview. All that does is when I'm actually shooting, I press and hold that button and it removes everything from the display for me so that I can get a full frame of what my camera is looking at. And then as soon as I release the button, all of my information comes back to the display. Now, as a quick note, I try setting up my video custom keys the same way as I do with my photos. That way, when I'm between photos and videos, I know which buttons are which. The only difference is this top button right here, C1, and I use that as my audio record levels for video. Now with custom key for the playback, I just leave that as send to smartphone, which is pressing my function button, because it's pretty nice to be able to send a picture or a video to your smartphone while you're out in the field. And this is how I set up my function menu, which is this button right here. And as soon as you tap on it, it gives you 10 different options, quick choice options of what you wanna choose while you're out in the field. So the top portion here is all of my photography and the bottom is for all video. And I'll quickly run through each one of these things and explain why I picked what I picked. And you guys can pick whatever one you want. So all you do, just like the custom buttons, is you just click on the one that you want and then you can scroll through 17 different pages of settings and pick whatever one you want. So to go back, I picked the touch operation as my top left so I can toggle it on and off. And all touch operation does is it focuses on whatever you touch on the screen if you have that enabled. 
I have my peak setting set, just like I mentioned before, where sometimes I'll turn peaking on so that I can really make sure that my camera is focusing and it'll give me little red outlines on the outside of the edges to make sure that I'm focused. So sometimes I turn that on, sometimes I turn it off. I have silent shooting in here, which will make the camera quiet when it shoots and it doesn't give that shutter button noise in case that I might be in like a quiet environment or even out in nature, I don't want an animal or an insect or something to flinch when it hears my camera shutter. So here's my drive mode. We talked about that already right now. Um, I have it set right here so that I can go in between quickly between continuous shooting, single shooting, or that bracket settings that we talked about. My zebra settings, I have this set where I can turn it on and off because sometimes zebras get a little bit annoying. Sometimes they're a good reference point so that you know what's being exposed properly and what's overexposed. I have my focus area here that we talked about earlier. Most of the time I'll leave it on wide, but I will change it to center in case uh, I'm in a situation where I want whatever's in the center of my camera to be in focus. I use that a lot in photography. I have my product showcase set here. I have my picture profiles here. I can quickly go in between which picture profile I'm looking for in order to get the proper creative style of photo that I'm looking for. Here's my exposure compensation. Like I said, I like to keep mine at about negative 0.3 when I'm out shooting photos because you can always bring your darks up, but you can't bring your highlights down. I have my white balance set here. So right now it's set to auto white balance, but I can always custom white balance in case I'm in a weird lighting situation, but it's easier just to go to your function menu and find this custom white balance than having to dig through the menu system. I have my grid line, which is nice because it lets me know, it helps me with my horizons to make sure that my camera is level. I also put my steady shot in the bottom left corner of the function menu. So now we're moving on. We have dial wheel setup. Right now I have this dial wheel set up as my aperture and this dial wheel set up as my shutter speed. And that's the way that it looks right here. If I wanted to change that to make this my aperture and this my shutter speed, then I would just change this from TVAV to AVTV. Dial wheel EV comp, I left that to off. Now I'm gonna jump all the way over to tab five because all the other stuff I never really touch. And the easiest way to get there instead of going through each single menu system is by pressing the function button because then it skips over tabs. So now we're here, I leave the monitor brightness to manual, but I do put this in my favorites down the road because I want to be able to be out in the field and quickly switch to a brighter display if it's really sunny outside. Just know that when you do this, you exhaust the battery faster. I also put the Gamma Display Assist inside of my favorites, which I'll show you here in a minute. And the reason I do that is if I'm ever shooting in HLG, it gives me a real time view of what HLG looks like on my display so I know how to expose it properly. Delete confirm, I left this to cancel first. I leave the display quality as standard. If I turned it to high, then it would just take up more battery. I don't know why I would ever need it to be high definition on my display. Although it would be nice to have higher definition on my display, it's also nice to have more battery life and I like that better. So now we just continue to move on. All of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. Format is for formatting your SD card and I put that in my favorites as well because because I'm constantly formatting my SD cards after I get home and I offload all of my images and back them up. So this little star in tab six is how I set up my favorites. I use airplane mode in video a lot, so I made sure to keep that in there. I put my monitor brightness in there so I can toggle in between there if it's a bright sunny day. I turn my volume settings to number seven, that's for video. I put my gamma display assist in here. I put my format in here and also my metering mode in case I'm in a weird exposure environment and I'm in program auto that I can quickly get to the metering mode and know exactly what I'm exposing for. So now I'm gonna run through the outside of this camera and show you which buttons are which so that you can quickly toggle between the things that you need in order to get the right shot at the right time. This is my zoom rocker, which zooms in and out. It's also nice when you press on playback and you're looking at an image, you can press the zoom rocker, which will zoom into your image to make sure that you are actually properly exposed and also focused on whatever it is that you were trying to focus on. You have the shutter button right here, which takes the photos. You have the record button, which records videos. Obviously your on and off switch. Then you have your mode button, which switches between video, photo, and S and Q or slow motion. We have the C1 button up here, which now when we press it down, it takes away all the information on the screen so that you can have a wide open look at what you're shooting. We have our aperture dial here, which controls the aperture when we're in manual exposure or aperture priority. When nothing is selected, this control wheel will control the shutter speed when you're in manual exposure or shutter priority. We have the menu button right here, our function menu, 
which we've already set up in the menu system. We have our shoot mode, which will toggle between what type of exposure we want to shoot in. We have the display button here at the top, so we can toggle between our different displays, whether we want no information, we want a histogram, or we want the balance meter to make sure that our camera is level with the horizon. Then on the right side, we have our ISO, so I can click on that and then I can toggle which ISO that I'm hoping for and then just click the select button. And then at the bottom of the control wheel, we have our focus magnifier, which punches in a little bit even when you're in autofocus so that you can see what the camera is focused on. We have our playback button and now we also have our autofocus, manual focus control toggle. Now when it comes to shoot mode, we have several different exposure settings that we can choose from. We have intelligent auto, which automatically identifies different things like people's faces, babies, animals, backlit areas. We have program auto, which exposes for whatever the camera thinks it's exposing for. We have our aperture priority, which sets the aperture however you want it, and then it adjusts the ISO and the shutter speed. So if I want a nice blurry background and I wanna make sure that my aperture is nice and wide open or as low as it can go, it'll stay that way and the shutter speed in the ISO will change. Same thing with shutter priority. If I wanna set my shutter speed to a set amount, like if I'm shooting something that's moving and I set my shutter speed high, I don't want that to adjust, but I'm okay if the aperture or the ISO adjusts, then I'll set my shutter priority. Manual exposure is pretty self-explanatory. Memory is if you have certain settings that you like and you wanna set it just like that. So every single time you press on the memory, the same settings will reappear in your camera. That's what you would use. Of course, you have the panoramic type of shots where you actually just hit the shutter button and you slowly move it across a horizon plane and it takes a nice wide landscape shot. And then of course you have portrait, which will blur the background out if you're shooting like a portrait and you don't have enough time to set your manual exposure. So that's it. That's how I set up my ZVE 10 for photography. I hope this video helps you go out there and get some better shots. At the end of the day, you don't wanna be fumbling through your menu system when you're out there in the field trying to shoot. And the better you have a grasp on the different custom buttons and the way you set up your camera, the better you will be in efficiency. I'm Joe with Film Alliance, and until the next video, peace.